In this video, I'm doing a full walkthrough of the login system, how we built it using C++ and QML, and how it connects with our dummy fast API backend. Now, this is not a tutorial. We already have a full episode where we build everything from scratch, line by line. This video is meant to walk you through what we have built, how it works, and how everything connects, from the QML interface to the backend logic in C++. Before we get into the actual login logic, I want to quickly show you the project structure just so we are on the same page. Under source, we have a clean modular layout. We have got this app controller source file. That's the glue between QML and our C++ logic. Then we have this login authentication source inside core, which holds all the backend logic for login and token handling. And then of course, we have UI folder with pages like login.qml and upload.qml if you want a full breakdown of how i structure this project and why i have done it this way with folders semic setups and module separations that's all covered in the first episode of this series so i won't repeat it here all right let's start from the user's perspective when the app launches we land on the login page login.qml it's a dark theme layout with two input fields one for email one for password there's also a remember me checkbox and a red sign in button. The key action happens when the button is clicked. Inside the mouse area of the button, we call app.login, which takes two parameters, email and password. Now, if you're wondering where this app object comes from, we registered it as a C++ singleton in main.cpp using this line. QML register singleton instance, our module name, our major version, minor version, our object and the reference to the actual object. That's what makes app globally accessible inside KML. So anything we call like app.login, we are actually calling a function in our C++ class, which is in app.cpp. But here's the thing, the app class does not handle login logic directly. It just forwards the call to our actual backend class, which is login authentication.cpp. Inside our app.cpp, the login function looks like this. So login function is actually calling the actual login function of login authentication class. And that's where we enter the main, log, main login logic, right? So first we set a login status. First, we set a loading state to true. And then we create a queue network request and point it to this URL, which is our dummy fast API backend. After that, we create a JSON object with the email and password and wrap it using QJSON document and send it with QNetwork Access Manager using a POST request. Once the request is sent, we connect the finished signal of the QNetwork reply. Inside the Lambda, we check for errors. If the reply has no error, we extract the token from the response using JSON. Now we store this token in this variable, then we emit login successful. If the user had checked remember me, we call this store token using queue settings. If they didn't check it, if they didn't check it, we clear the token. On the other hand, if there is an error like invalid credentials or no responses from the server, we emit login failed. And also clear any existing token just to be safe. So that's our basic login flow, but let's quickly look at how remember me checkbox works. In QML, when the checkbox is toggled, we call this app.setRememberFunction, function, which takes the parameter as a status. That lands in the app class again and forwards to the actual backend in our login authentication. Internally, that just sets a boolean set. Internally, that just sets a boolean status remember. If it's true, we remember the token after login. If not, we just skip it. Here's where it gets cooler. We support auto login when the app starts in main.kml we call app.try auto login from the component on complete in the c++ slide try auto login calls get token which checks if a token exists in queue settings if it finds one it calls fetch profile which sends uh, a get request to the profile endpoint attaching a token in the authorization header using this function here request.set raw header where we set the raw header as authorization and the bearer will be our token. 
If the profile is valid, we emit a fetch profile successful signal with the user and email. If it fails, maybe the token expired or is invalid, we just clear it and let the user log in manually. Now on the KML side, how do we react to all of this? Inside login.kml, we used a connections block. So here, our target is the app object, which is the actual app class. So the moment the login successful signal is emitted from C++, KML listens to it and transitions to upload.kml base using stack view. It's a clean signal based flow. We are not checking flags or looping, just reacting to the emitted events. To recap, so what is happening here? The user enters credentials in KML and clicks sign in. KML now calls the app.login function that goes to login authentication class, sends a push request to our first API server. If there is a success, it will extract the token, store it if needed, if the user has clicked on the remember me button or not, and then emit login successful if there is no error. And then KML listens to that signal login successful and navigates to the next piece. If remember me was checked, token gets saved. On next launch, we try auto login using the same token so that the user now have to put on the credentials again. Everything is modular and clean. You can reuse the login module in any Qt application, no matter the backend. You can even further upgrade this code if you want. So yeah, that's a complete walkthrough of how the login system works in this project. If you want to see how we built it step by step, from writing the C++ classes to connecting everything in KML, then go watch the full tutorial episode. That one goes deep and slow. This one was just to give you a higher level view of how all parts are wired up. Thanks for watching.